Hi, I'm Allison. And I'm Melissa. And this is Understanding the Role of Solar Variability on the Climate. Our story begins at the beginning of the 17th century, where a man named Galileo Galilei looked at the sun through his telescope and discovered small discolored areas of the sun, which he believed to be the sun's clouds. We now call these regions sunspots. He recorded their location and noticed how they seemed to move across the surface of the sun and disappear. So what exactly are sunspots? A sunspot is a place on the photosphere of the sun that is cooler than the areas around it. This causes it to appear darker. According to NASA, the average temperature of the sun is around 6,000 degrees Celsius and an average sunspot is around 4,500 degrees Celsius. Sunspots vary in size when they move around the sun, but they are often larger than the Earth. Well, what causes these spots? The sun is made up of hot gases and is not a solid mass. Therefore, the different layers and latitudes rotate at different velocities. The convection and movement of this fluid, which has charged particles, causes many different magnetic fields on the surface of the sun. These different fields are constantly interacting with one another to cause solar flares, which occur around sunspots due to opposing magnetic fields. According to NASA, these explosions on the surface of the sun can release energy equivalent to a billion megatons of dynamite in a brief period of time. The energy produced during flares is called the solar wind, and we can see evidence of this at, in Earth's high latitudes in the form of the beautiful aurora. The concern with solar flares is typically not the effect they could have on the climate, rather they have the potential to affect our satellites and power grids. Hey Allison, could you explain the sunspot cycle for us? Well this concept was first observed by German astronomer Heinrich Schwab. He noticed a pattern in the fluctuations of the quantity of sunspots over an 11-year period. The 11-year cycle refers to a naturally occurring social phenomenon that describes periods of maximum and minimum solar output. The maxima come around approximately every 11 years, hence the name. So can the sunspot cycle affect the climate? Solar variability can affect the climate on Earth. Scientists have observed correlations between temperature on Earth and sunspot activity. For example, parts of the Earth experienced what is known as the Little Ice Age between 1645 and 1715. This time frame correlates with a period in the sunspot cycle history known as the Maunder Minimum. The Maunder Minimum was when there were very few sunspots, resulting in increased temperature variability around Earth. There are also short-term droughts that seem to correlate with these cycles. Some people claim the Earth's global average temperature is rising only because of these naturally occurring solar cycles. Let's see how one of these arguments holds up based on our scientific understanding of solar variability. Joe Bustardi is the chief forecaster at Weatherbell and has a bachelor's degree in meteorology from Penn State. He has been a popular personality on a variety of outlets, including Fox News and the Colbert Report. Bustardi acknowledges the climate is changing but claims solar variability is solely responsible. In one statement he made to a reporter for Fox News, Bustardi said, We have warmed up overall over the last 20 to 30 years, over the last 200 years because of sunspot cycles. You can trace it to the sunspot cycles. So with what we know about sunspot cycles, can this be true? The latest maxima of the 11-year cycle occurred in 2013, so if rising surface temperatures were the result of increased solar output, we would expect to see a decline in temperatures after 2013, but this has not been observed. When we analyze graphs of solar variability, we see an up and down pattern that does not correlate with the steadily rising global temperatures. The main problem with Mr. Bastardi's argument is that the absorbed solar variability can't sufficiently explain the increase in average global temperature. While natural processes do play a small role in temperature changes, anthropogenic sources provide a much stronger correlation. When scientists evaluate an increase in greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide, there is a positive correlation between greenhouse gas concentrations in the Earth's atmosphere and global surface temperatures. The mechanism for this process is the well-documented and understood greenhouse effect. Mr. Bastardi is falsely reassuring the public that no changes need to be made to our use of fossil fuels and that everything will soon be fine. He provides no evidence and instead uses his qualification as a meteorologist to support his claims. 
Scientific claims require scientific evidence. Mr. Pistardi provides no evidence, and he wouldn't be able to because the science does not support his claims. Climate change cannot solely be attributed to the solar cycle. It's important to consider the effects of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases on global temperatures. As individuals, we each have the power to advocate for thoughtful discussions of science. We can promote energy efficiency, low carbon technologies, and other methods for reducing greenhouse gases in the atmosphere today, rather than waiting for temperatures to return to those experienced in the 70s. Thank you for tuning in to Understanding the Role of Solar Variability on the Climate.